All right, let's look at how to set up a goal in Google Analytics 4. We're going to need two things. We're going to need Google Tag Manager, and we're going to need Google Analytics 4. You'll also want to have an idea of what kind of, of goal or conversion, because they're called conversions now in Google Analytics 4, uh, what kind of conversion you're working with. Is it something like uh, a page view, like a thank you page? Is it someone clicking on a specific thing on a page? Is it a form submission? Uh, is it something else? Is it some kind of custom event? And you'll want to know that and have that documented, written down in advance. <clears throat> so let's go in first. Uh, we're going to first go to Google Tag Manager. <clears throat> Before we can start setting up the goal, we want to check for a couple things to make sure they're in place. So I'm in Tag Manager. I'm going to go to the Variables folder here. And then I'm going to hit configure on my built in variables. <clears throat> and I want to validate that a few things are turned on. Obviously, page URL, I want to make sure that is turned on. I want to look at click URL and click target, make sure those are turned on. Uh, I want to see, of course, form URL, I want to make sure that is turned on uh, as well. Uh, the other tags are optional, but those would be the big ones. Without those turned on, a lot of goal tracking does not work. It's not going to work properly. <clears throat> so make sure those are turned on in variables. Next, the way Tag Manager works is pretty straightforward. Uh, there's two things. There's tags and triggers. Tags are what Tag Manager does, and triggers are what Tag Manager listens for. So it's listening for something happening, and then when it hears that thing happening, it raises its hand and it does its thing. <clears throat> so the trigger is what it does. Um, let's look at setting up a couple of different kinds of triggers. So I'm going to create a new trigger here. We'll, let's call this Amazon Book Click. Generally speaking with triggers, uh, it's a good idea to name them at, with what type of trigger it is. Is it a click? Is it a page view? Is it a thank you page? Is it a form submission? Name it something sensible so that you, just looking at the list, you can tell what it is. And here's where we see all the different kinds of triggers. So if you've got a, a conversion, which is a, a page view, like a thank you page, you would choose page view. If you have a one uh, where you're looking at a someone clicking on a link, maybe to Amazon, which is what we're going to use in this case, we're going to choose just links. If there are pages where you have a form being filled out, you're going to want to choose form submission. Uh, you're going to look for that form submission on those pages. Uh, this would be important for any kind of landing page where somebody clicks uh, a form submission, they submit a form, but the page doesn't change, right? The URL doesn't change. There's no thank you page or the thank you is in the page. You want to use a form submission in those cases. <clears throat> so I'm going to choose just links because in this case, I'm going to be tracking uh, links to a, a book on Amazon. And my choices here are all link clicks or some link clicks. Uh, in this case, I wanted those uh, uh, links that are going to Amazon. So remember we said click URL is one of those things. It's really important. Uh, I want to say click URL contains, and in this case, Amazon.com. This would be an example of somebody clicking on a, a link going to Amazon. I can't see what happens afterwards. So once somebody clicks on this link to an, uh, an Amazon book buy, to me, my website has done its job, right? So I would, I would choose uh, Amazon.com, and we're going to call that the conversion. Now, again, if I wanted to uh, look at a thank you page, for example, or, or a form submission, I would say, what page is that form on, right? Uh, and I want, maybe it was a page, we'll call it, you know, landing page or whatever. Uh, whatever the URL the page is in, uh, we could use, we could restrict it to say, I only want to fire, look for form submissions on this page. Or if there's multiple forms on a page, I'd want to look at uh, the form URL for the specific uh, form that is being fired, right? And then the easiest one, of course, uh, that we're most uh, familiar with are page views. So in this case, I'm going to go back to my page URL and say maybe page URL contains thank you, whatever. Uh, the destination is you would put that in and that would be a, a, a page or a, a conversion page general best practice when possible is still to go old school and have a thank you page of some kind that way you can track it most easily um, you can sort of look backwards retroactively and see like you know uh, how many times how many people got to this page on a website and of course you can put uh pixels and stuff specifically for that page. It's, it's just easier that way when possible.
So, uh, in this case, like I said, I wanted to do an Amazon link click, but we had figured we'd chat about a few of those different things. So the click URL is what I'm going to choose here. Contains Amazon.com. I'm going to hit save. So now I've got my trigger built. Nothing's going to happen right right now because there's no corresponding tag. We just said trigger. Um, is, you know, listen for this this trigger. Um, but there's nothing for tag manager to do. So now let's go into tags and create that conversion. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new tag. Again, this is where naming conventions really matter. I'm going to call this GA4 Amazon Book Click Conversion. Again, if you're using a, a tag manager account, triggers are the same regardless, but tags, for at least for a little while longer, could be going to older Google Analytics, GA3, or new Google Analytics, GA4. Um, so it's general best practice to, to make sure you denote in the name of the tag what <laughs> which system it's going to. That way, later on down the road, when you have to decommission the old GA3 tags, you're not accidentally turning off things that go to Google Analytics 4. Uh, we're going to assume a couple things about tags. So let's go back for a second here. Uh, discard. Google Analytics 4 requires a base configuration tag to be in place. That's uh, basically is all the settings. So uh, there should be one already set up. If there isn't, uh, you're going to want to make sure that it, it's in place. So let's go ahead and so in, I have here, you'll, you'll see it's called GA4 configuration. Right? So this is my GA4 configuration tag. Uh, and you're generally going to want to make sure that it sends a page you event when the configuration loads, right? It fires on all pages. That's the general best practice setup. Um, one thing you may want to do, you may want to have the met the the web stream ID as a custom variable. I it depends on how susceptible you are to copy paste errors. Um, because this is only used once in the base configuration tag, I don't see it as as big a deal. So I'm going to go ahead and go back here. So you must have the base configuration tag in place. Look for it in the list, right? GA4 configuration. If it's not there, the account's not ready to be using GA4. So now let's go ahead and create our GA4 Amazon book click conversion. Again, naming convention, very important. Our tag configuration, this is going to be an event everything in GA4 is an event. It doesn't matter what it is, page view, form submission, you know, interactive game, everything is events. So we're going to click that there. We select our, our configuration tag. And now we want to come up with some kind of name for this that is around less than 30 characters that is still intelligible. So we're going to create this event. Tag manager is not where you specify whether it's a conversion or not. You're just setting up this this event to, to go to GA4. So let's call this Amazon book click conversion. I like to have the word conversion in events to make sure that it's clear it's a conversion as opposed to a non-conversion event. Now, this is where we're going to set the what used to be called the goal and goal value. So this is the this event name, this conversion is the goal, we now want to set values for it. Now, those values are whatever the thing is worth, right? So if you know what a, a lead form fill is worth or a click on uh, a book link is worth, you, you're going to want to put it in here. Our first parameter we're going to put in is currency, right? So every goal value has to have a currency and the currency has to be specified in the three letter code for what it is like euro, uh, Danish kroner, uh, US dollar, etc. Second is our conversion value, and that's going to be whatever the amount is. So in this case, I'm going to call it a one dollar value, right? So I'm saying the currency is one is US dollars. The value of this conversion event is one. If you don't have this, it's okay, but know then that you won't see the corresponding data in GA4, right? So you don't have to have this information, but then you don't get a value. In GA4. Um, so we're going to go ahead and uh, so that's the event parameters. Uh, you shouldn't need to set up any other uh, user properties and things. I mean, there's it, use cases for it. You do want to specify uh, what kind of consent is needed. Generally speaking, for GA4, there's no additional consent required. And then the trigger we're going to specify, of course, is our uh, Amazon book click 
trigger. All right, so I'm going to add that in. So this is saying when you hear this, Tag Manager, this is what you do. I'm going to send the Amazon book click conversion event to GA4. So I'm going to now, I, my, my work in Tag Manager, which is the bulk of the work for this, is done. I'm going to hit Submit and publish my changes. So Tag Manager is now doing its part. The next part has to be done in, in, in Google Analytics 4. And this is where we specify that that thing is happening. So I'm going to go to GA4 here. I'm going to go into my Configure menu. I'm going to go into Events. Now, most events uh, that are being sent do auto show up. I don't like to rely on that because things happen. So I'm going to create an event. I'm going to call a custom event. And of course, it's going to be called Amazon Book Click Conversion. <clears throat> right? Um, that is the event name that we're looking for. Other stuff we don't need to worry about. We just hit create, right? Because we're going to take the parameters that we specified in Tag Manager and they're going to get bound to this event, like the goal value, the conversion value. So we've got our, our custom event set up, but that's not enough. We also need to tell Google Analytics this event is a conversion. So I'm going to create a new conversion event, put in that name, save. And now it's going to look for when that comes in, right? So we've now done the provisioning of the event in Tag Manager with why it happened or when it happens, right? And where it happens and how much it's worth. And then we created the matching pairs in GA4. Now you could, if it's, if, if it's not mission critical, uh, you could just wait a day or two for the events to show up in Google Analytics 4. But again, like I said, I'm uncomfortable leaving that to the software to automatically do it. And then you have to go in and mark it as a conversion. It's much easier to create the Amazon book click conversion, uh, the event, and then just immediately have it marked as a conversion. And now you're squared away. So that's the process for setting up a goal in Google Analytics 4. Because it's all done in Tag Manager, all you got to do in GA4 is say, yes, this is a conversion and all of the complex stuff is handled within Tag Manager. Hope this was helpful. Uh, good luck setting up Google Analytics for uh, conversions in your account. Thank you.